Thank you very much. Each and every one of us started off in the same way. We all started our lives as one single fertilized egg. And that one single fertilized egg went through an amazing development to shape the person unique as we all are. And I'm going to share with you that that development that you went through is very important in shaping future health and who we become. And because we are plastic, we are able to adapt to our environment, um, that's something that's very unique to all living creatures. Plants, animals, humans are plastic. They're able to adapt to the environment. And the fact that we are able to adapt to our environment makes us very successful in um, living in very diverse um, surroundings. But that very early um, um, plasticity, the ability to adapt to the environment, is also very important in uh, determining later health. And I just want to show you one example um, of developmental plasticity that is, I think, a very strong example, and that's the example of a bonsai tree, as you see here. A bonsai tree is genetically exactly the same as the big tree that we all know. It's just a miniature only because its soil base was reduced when it was developing. So when you provide very, very little soil and you restrict the, um, um, the, the nutrients that allow a plant to grow, it becomes this miniature version that doesn't realize its growth potential just because during early development the nutrients have been restricted. It hasn't been able to grow to its full growth potential. Well, failure to realize growth potential is one of the main causes of many chronic diseases that we're fighting currently today. There's no reason to assume that humans are any different from all the other living creatures that are also able to adapt to their environment. What I'm showing you here is an early embryo, just a few weeks after that fertilized egg, and 12 weeks after fertilization, all the organs are formed, the heart is beating, the brain is developing, the kidney has been laid down, the liver has been um, formed and shaped. And during this period, the essentials of all organs that we'll live with for the rest of our lives are laid down at this very moment. So the heart that we're born with is the heart that we'll have to live with for the rest of our lives. After birth, we can't make any single more heart muscle cell. The kidneys, for instance, they uh, have many, many filtering units. They are laid down in the midst of pregnancy, around week 30. And by that time, the maximum number of filtering units in the kidney is fixed. You won't be able to make any more filtering units later on in life. Luckily, we're all born with a big reserve capacity. So we have many more filtering units, nephrons in our kidneys that we will ever need. But you can imagine that if you're born with a small reserve capacity, you run into problem much sooner with the wear and tear of life and aging as it progresses through life than if you were born with a big reserve capacity. So what you're born with is really, really essential for how you're able to deal with the challenges that you're faced with later in life. Before birth, not only your heart is formed, your brain is shaped, the kidneys are made, the um, liver is made, but also your uh, bodily thermostats are fixed. It's determined how you're able to deal with stress, for instance. Taste buds have developed before you were even born, and food preferences are already set before you're born. In fact, 
the oocyte that made you and me wasn't made in your mother, but was actually made in your mother when she was in your grandmother's womb. Every girl is born with all the oocytes she'll ever have. So what happens to you in this phase of life affects you, but if this is a girl, it might actually affect two generations because you were made when you, your mother was in your grandmother's womb. So this is really where life begins. To show you how tremendously important the building blocks are for later health, I want to show you an experiment that has been done in mice where two groups of pregnant mice either got normal diets during pregnancy or their diets were restricted during pregnancy. And mice pregnancies last for about three weeks, so relatively short. And after birth, these mice were either given normal diets or they were given fast food diets from birth until they died. At the end, I show you the number of days that these groups of mice live. And as you can clearly see, fast food diets, bad for lifestyle. We already knew that, but what I think is much more clear in this picture is that what your mother ate during pregnancy, what provided the building blocks for the organs that you'll have to live with for the rest of your life, is much more important in determining your lifespan than what you eat after birth. So actually, the mice whose mothers were undernourished lived 25% shorter lives than those who were well-nourished before birth. This is a huge effect on lifespan. So really, you are not what you ate, but you are actually what your mother ate. <laughs> or potentially even what your grandmother ate, obviously. I just want to show you, and that's the research that we've been doing, that mice are, in that sense, quite similar to men, because the importance of diet before birth, so what your mother ate during pregnancy, and what we see in this example of mice, also holds for humans. We have been studying not in an experimental way, of course, but we've been studying the effects of undernutrition before birth in a very unique setting, namely in the Dutch hunger winter. Seventy years ago, this city was struck by an extreme period of undernutrition, and what we've done is <coughs> examine the effects of undernutrition before birth on later health. And what I've tried to do in this slide is summar summarize for you 20 years of research showing that if children were unlucky to be exposed to a very harsh diet when their organs were formed in early gestation and their mothers ate only two slices of bread, two potatoes and half a sugar beet when the heart the liver, the kidney, and the lungs of their offspring were being built, these people ended up being less healthy in later life. It's not very surprising if I've just told you that that's the period in life when all your organs are formed, but if your building blocks that you get from your mother are poor, it's not very surprising that the quality of those organs is poorer. So we found that depending on the timing, during pregnancy, when the famine occurred, people who were undernourished before they were born were less healthy. They were more likely to age quickly. They were more likely to have a heart attack. They had more mental health problems. They more often had difficulty with um, me metabolizing sugars. So they were less healthy and lived shorter lives than people who had been well-fed during pregnancy. And I come from a biological background, from a medical background, but strikingly, economists, from a very different scientific point of view, actually come to a very similar conclusion that preventing disease might be something that we need to do by focusing on a good start in life. This is the Heckman equation developed by an economist, Heckman, who won the Nobel Prize for <coughs> Economy, and he showed that 
the cleverest investment anyone can make is by investing in human development as early as possible. The earlier the investment, the bigger re the return. He calculated that one dollar invested in early human development results in an eight dollar return. So really the most smart investment anyone could make. And investing in early human development doesn't only lead to better health, it also leads to children being more able to attend school, to achieve better academically, to have better jobs, to contribute to the economy, to have an impact in society. So really, early development is very important in very, very different areas. Now here comes the hard part. Early life nutrition is very important, but these are pictures taken of families around the world with what they eat during a week. Let me start by saying there's enough food available for every single inhabitant in the world. We're able to do incredibly clever things, but we're very, very lousy at distributing food that's available for all the inhabitants in the world in an equal way. There's big, big differences in food availability, and they lead to a big, big problem. Some children who are born win the lottery at birth, but far too many children don't, and they spend the rest of their life fighting the consequences. If you haven't had a good start in life, it's much more difficult to go to school, to achieve a degree, to get a job, to take care of your own family. So the vicious cycle of poverty is something that's very difficult to break if we're not able to provide every child with the best possible start in life. This is another Nobel Prize winner. This is Muhammad Yunus, who received the Nobel Peace Prize for his work with microcredits in the Grameen Bank. And he, in his talk, when he received the Nobel Peace Prize, referred to the poor as bonsai people. He said there's nothing wrong with the seed, but society just hasn't given them the proper soil base, the proper building blocks to achieve their full potential. So what I want to argue tonight is that what happens to us in the womb during that very, very critical period in life actually affects the world. If we were able to give each child the best possible start in life, we would be able to prevent disease, we would be able to prevent or reduce, at least, inequality, and would be able to achieve a healthier, more equal, more fair future for generations to come. Thank you very much.